Pepsi Cola. P E P S I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States Counter Spy. Especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the visiting vultures. Another counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola, it's a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi. From one big 12-ounce bottle, you're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money, goes twice as far. Pepsi's America's big, big favorite. And America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi's best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, to Counter Spy. In a conference room at Counter Spy headquarters in Washington, David Harding addresses a group of men around a long, shiny table. Gentlemen, I'm honored by the presence here of the governors of the several southern states covered by our counter-spy districts 9, 10, and 11. We realize that your state administrations are faced with a large criminal operation, selling illegally made alcohol and evading federal taxes. Peter, those figures, please. Yes, Mr. Harding. District 9, estimated tax loss, $221,000. District 10... $400,000. District 11, over half a million dollars. Now, gentlemen, we don't yet know what gang makes that alcohol or where it's made, but all over your states, counter spy squads are moving into action. All right, here comes the truck, boys. Don't let it get by. If it's loaded with one gallon corn syrup cans, that's what we're looking for. Okay, buddy, pull up. United States Counter Spies. This is the place. It's a dance hall in Tavern. They won't open up for us. All right, men. Smash down that door. coming fast, but it's got to be stopped. If the truck doesn't stop, blast the tires. Get those tires! So far, gentlemen, no useful leads have been obtained from truck drivers, tavern keepers, and others taken in these counter-spire raids. One lead of possible value has been found, however. My assistant, Harry Peters, is leaving tonight to investigate it in Chicago. Hey, buddy, I'm looking for the main office of the famous Flanagan Sisters Corn Syrup Company. Is it in here? No, no, this is only the garage. The office is in that snazzy little building right across the street. Anybody here? Oh, uh, excuse me. Yeah, Buster, what'll it be? 
I was looking for a secretary or a receptionist or something. That's a little blonde dame there, usually. What's your problem? I want to find out something about the famous Flanagan sisters. Why, Buster? I'm Harry Peters, United States Counterspies. Well, Peters, I got news for you. I'm the famous Flanagan sister. You're the famous Flanagan sister? All of them? <laughs> yeah, it's only a trade name, and I bought the business a couple of years ago. My name's Hype Gordon. Sit down. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. I, uh... Do you believe in large offices? Why not? I spent half my life here. Is, uh, this one of your cans of syrup? A sample, yeah. That label... That is a portrait of the original Flanagan sisters bending over a hot stove, making their corn syrup according to a, a receipt handed down from mother to daughter. Between you and me, the daughter should hand it back. <laughs> Tell me, do you know what happens to your used cans? Why? Well, do you take them back, for instance? Like milk bottles, you mean? Mm. <laughs> no. Why? A lot of them seem to be used for shipping illegal alcohol around the country. Labels ripped off, of course. My cans were. Into the so-called monopoly states where liquor is sold only by state-owned liquor stores. Bootleg liquor undersells those stores very profitably because somebody forgets to pay the federal alcohol taxes. We figure around $3 million on this particular operation alone. Oh, you trace those cans to me. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Through the manufacturer. <laughs> you want to look around the place, Peter? I'll show you where we make the syrup and can it. Fifty, sixty employees, I got. I'll even show you the garage where we ship it out to stores and wholesalers. Maybe I'll even give you a couple of cans to take home to the little woman. Come on. This way. Hello, Milky. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that you, Mr. Gordon? Listen. Counter spies are sniffing around my plant here. Counter spies? Holy fish. So don't send any more trucks here from the still till you get word from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mr. Gordon, you had three trucks loaded and ready to roll out of your garage, didn't you? I got them out fast. So sit tight, Melky, and we'll be okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Peters to Harding in Washington. No evidence whatever at Hype Gordon's syrup plant to connect it or him with illegal alcohol manufacture. However, have sent agents to trail three loaded trucks that left his garage while I was there. Gordon himself also under surveillance. Has three cars, including limousine with French chauffeur. Lives in most expensive apartment hotel in Chicago, swarming with uniformed flunkies. Gordon's rental at least fifteen thousand a year for a lavishly furnished penthouse apartment. Hey, Sleeping Beauty. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> wake up, sweetheart. Love a boy. Oh, hello, hi. Who are you doing? Working. What else? It's only 12.30, Benny. Say, uh, we got any bologna? You fell asleep on a goddamn waiting stage. Must be love. <laughs> What's the matter? The famous Flanagan sisters and Uncle Sam. Holy smoke. That? I'm not sure yet. But there's no time for you to get in trouble, lover boy. I still need that second me. Oh. Hey, I asked you if we got any, uh, bologna pumping it. Oh, well, yeah. Right. Living in the most expensive apartment with one Chicago. And I have to keep bologna and pumpernickel in the icebox for you. Refrigerator. What's the matter with bologna? It is so crude. It was only frog's legs and wine or something. But it's bologna and pumpernickel. Thanks. Huh. How's it, Vinny? Please. Hi. Uh, how tough is it with a No. I figure as long as they don't find out where my still is, they can't tie me up to it. Oh. I'm just going to sit around and smile. And after a while, the counter spies will figure I'm an innocent victim. Go away. Oh, oh 
only smoke hot. Somebody at the door without being announced. Maybe it's Kevin or Spy. You go on down the hall to the bedroom. Stay there. Go on, go on. Let me know what happens. Uh, yeah? Well, well, hi, uh, Hype. Well, well, say you look just exactly the way I thought you would. Yes, sir. <laughs> Not one hair out of place. Press the flesh, Hype, old boy. It's good to see you. Oh, the snap. <laughs> Hell, I, I let go of my hand, will you? How'd you get past the doorman? Oh, my, yes. Hey, <laughs> look. Do you mind if I drop my suitcase right here? Uh, I'm Sam. Sam? Yeah, Sam Vandervoort. Your wife's brother, Sam. Sam? Yes. Oh, Sam. What? How are you? Oh, great hype, great, just great. Uh, you see, I, I hopped the rattle out of St. Louis early today. Made up my mind to hit for the Windy City. You know, for a decent job. I need scope pipe in there. Ain't no scope in St. Lou. And uh, just between you and me, I uh, I come on ahead of Gladys so I could sneak in a couple of hot nightclubs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Gladys uh, coming so. Oh, uh, sure, sure. You see, we thought it was about time we met the man my little sister Vinnie married last year. Uh, Hey, say, you got a mighty classy joint around here. Kind of small, though, ain't it? There's only Vinny and me. Uh, uh, she's in back, I better tell her you. Oh, yeah. no, hold it, hold it. Don't bother her. I don't bother her. It's late and I could bed down right here. Uh-oh. Hey, ain't this one of them sofas that opens up into a bed? Hey, this, huh? <laughs> is, is it big enough for two? What? Well, you know, Gladys and I wouldn't want inconvenience in that. We'll be mighty comfortable right here in the living room. <laughs> You mean uh, sure. you uh, couldn't get rooms in a hotel? I I, I, uh, I can work it for you. Hotel? Hotel hype? Uh, when I got relatives I'm as fond of it like you and Vinny, I wouldn't dream of hurting their feelings by going to no hotel. Uh, by the... Uh, oh, oh, and Sony and Pumpernickel, huh? Good, right, good. Yeah. Honey, I'm sorry there's no frog's leg. Oh, don't feel bad about that hype. I love bologna and pumpernickel. <laughs> To Counter Spy Field Office, Chicago. Surveillance report concerning the trucks followed from famous Flanagan Sisters Corn Syrup Company Garage. They proceeded south by various routes to make deliveries to 18 illegal liquor users. They are being kept under observation. Relay this report to Mr. Harding in Counter Spy Plane 1, en route Chicago. Dave, I'm sure glad you're here in Chicago. This new development nails it right to Hype Gordon. He himself ships out alcohol under cover of shipping out corn syrup. But where is the alcohol made? I see only one thing to do, Peter. Pull a new series of raids on his customers in the southern districts that might scare him into revealing where his still's located. This tavern is being padlocked for violation of the law. Watch those rear windows. They're trying to get away. All right, step on it, Jack. We'll be late for the next raid. They're shooting at him. Blast the lock off that door. Hey, Hype! Hype, for the love of Mike, you better come out here to the still. Take it apart or something. Hey, you know about all these new counters by raids? Listen, Milky, they can raid every joint in the country. Won't mean nothing to us so long as they don't locate the still. And they won't so long as I don't go there so the counter spies can tell me. You just keep your head down and sit tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sit tight. We ought to do something. No. This was another mob muscle again or something like those West Side guys two years ago. I'd go after them with guns. This has to be played close to the vest. Okay, Mr. Gordon. Uh, suppose I have to call you later tonight. You're home? Home. I can't go home till way later. My brother-in-law's visiting us. What a schmo. So throw him out. I can't throw him out. My wife sticks up for him. I'm nuts about my wife. Then there's my sister-in-law, Gladys. 
She's tall and skinny. She talks and talks and talks and talks. I never dream of making you, Jimmy. Only after all, you're my sister-in-law. Uh, and you know how Sam would never say a word unless he was sure. You said just now that he wasn't sure. Well, after all, a wife ought to know how her husband earns his money. And after all, you only knew hype three weeks before you married. I, I know, Gladys. And Sam was always good to me. Especially after Pop died back home. But that doesn't give him or you the right to criticize hype. I'm nuts about her. Well, all Sam said was that he didn't think the famous Flanagan Sisters Corn Syrup Company was very successful. And still, you and Hype have three cars, and you got four closets full of clothes, and that diamond oh. ring, and, and then yesterday, Sam followed Hype around the city, and Hype didn't go anywhere near any customers. Sam's been killing. I, I mean, snooping around after Hype. Oh, that's contemptible. Oh, Hype? Lo lover boy? <laughs> You're awfully late. A lot of work for me. Hello, oh, Gladys. Hello. Vinny, I'm going to have some bologna and pumpernickel. Where's Sam? Uh, in the kitchen, having some bologna and pumpernickel. <laughs> Time to hit the hay, Vinny. Uh, yeah. G good night, Gladys. Good night, Vinny. Good night, Gladys. Mm. Vinny, mm. the guy drives me nuts. Who? Oh, Sam. I'm Gladys. Now, listen, sweetheart, how about taking them out? Well, they won't be staying much longer. What do you mean, two years? Now, lover boy. They drive me nuts. They're always in the way. I sleep on a sofa. Dive in. Borrows my shirts. Needs my bologna and pumpernickel. Oh, I'll hear you. It's getting so the only pleasure I have at home. Just taking off my shoes. <laughs> I can't throw Sam and Gladys out, lover boy. They're all the family I got left. Vinny. Vinny, my customers down south got raided. Oh. I need a clear head, Vinny. And that schmo brother of yours gets me so mad I can't think straight. First thing you know, I'll, I'll do something dumb. And, honey, it'll be his fault. I'll, I'll, I'll murder the guy. Hi, not so loud. Hi. Oh. Where are my pajamas? Sam got my pajamas? On the pillow. Uh, hi, I, I guess this is no time for you to be upset, and I, I better tell you instead of you finding it out. Find out what? Well, uh, Sam follows you around. What? No. He follows me around. Sam, that iron-headed clam digger? I'll brain him now, so help me, I... Where the Sam Hill of my slippers? I, I suppose he's got them too. Hi, but lover boy. Now, please don't make a scene. I'll, uh, I I'll get rid of them both by Saturday, I promise. Please, lover boy. Please. In just a moment, we'll return to Counter Spy, brought to you by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lot more value, lot more zest. Buy, take less when Pepsi's best. More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question why take less when Pepsi's best? No budget, no allowance ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi Cola. Because one big 12 ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste, twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi's best? Yes, families like yours and mine, families all over America, they're all saying, why take less when Pepsi's best? Pepsi Cola hits the spot, tastes terrific when you're hot, more and better than the rest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always, get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, back to Counter Spy. Peter, 
I've been studying the surveillance reports on Hype Gordon. Yeah, me too, Dave. He hasn't made a single betraying move. It's great. We smash his customers, stop the tax losses. We know he ships out the alcohol. But what we don't know is where's that still? On the moon, maybe. Well, I've got one notion that might be useful. Did you notice in these reports about Hype Gordon's brother and sister-in-law visiting? And driving him crazy, yes. Peter's relatives and in-laws often make trouble for decent people. Why not trouble for crooks, too? I think this Mr. Sam Vandervoort might be a lot of help to us. With a push from you. And Sam, maybe I shouldn't have said anything about you falling hype around, but it, it just sort of popped out. Oh, well, Gladys, it don't make no difference. I couldn't find anything out anyway. Huh? I guess I'd have to go back to St. Louis Saturday, maybe. Where are they tonight, Hype and Vinny? I don't know. We got the apartment all to ourselves, and I must say it's a relief to have a little privacy. Oh, somebody's at the door. Uh, you go, Sam, and if it's a telegram or anything for Hype, you better open it in case it's important. All right. Yeah? Is this Hype in? Hype Gordon? No. No, he's not. Did I give him a message? You a friend of his? No, I'm his, I'm his brother-in-law. Oh, well, give him this message, would you? Rush. Tell him to get out to the still right away. Get out to the still right away? Uh, what name will I tell him? He'll know where the message is from. So long. Who was it, Sam? Telegram or special delivery? Sam, I asked you a question. Why don't you answer me? Sam, something's happened. I can always tell by your face whenever you've got an idea. Now, why don't you huh? tell me? What? I said, I was saying, oh, Sam, shut that... up, will you? Oh. I'm trying to think. <laughs> Vinny. Vinny, it's me. Sam. Gladys? No, oh, well, nobody. Yeah? Hi, this is Vinny. Where have you been? To the athletic club, like I told you. Where are you? I drove Sam out here. Here, and told Milky he got all excited and ran away. Oh, all the other men, too. Milky! The other men... Vinny, are you at the still? With Sam? I couldn't help it. I the minute Sam told me about the message he got. When we couldn't find you, and we didn't dare wait. Vinny, I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to kill somebody for it. Don't move. Don't do anything. I'll come right out. I was only trying to help. Help? Help? Yeah. You and Sam together. You've made me do the one thing I swore I'd never do. Come out to this still so I could be tailed. Hype, you got me and Vinny all wrong about Sam, that. Sam, you shut up. Now, what'd you bring that idiot along for, too? Me? Gladys? Look. Now, look, all of you. I'm trying to find a hand on you. On what happened? Now, what happened? Well... Well, while we were out, you and me, that is, Hype. A guy well, come to the door with a message for you. To get out to the still right away. A guy? What yeah. guy? Well, I thought he was sent by Milk. Milky wouldn't send a guy. He'd fall. And so you came out here. Sam, what did you put in? Now, Hype, you'd better listen to what I got to say. Tell him, Sam. Gladys, you shut up or I'll brain you. Oh. All right, let's have it, Sam. All right. You think I'm a chowderhead, don't you? But I figured out right from the start you had a racket. And the minute that guy talked about a still, I was sure of it. So, so? So I want a job. Here, working for you. We're at the famous Flanagan Sisters Corn Syrup Company. Or else I talk. Sam! You told me you only wanted to help, honey. Shut up, Penny. You'll talk, Sam. To the counter spy. Oh, bright eyes, you listen to me. Now hold your horses, Hype. Just give me a job and I won't talk. Talk, you big baboon, you! That message wasn't for Milky. It was a counter-spy gag, a trap, and you walked into it. I gotta walk into it, too, to get you out. Give me a job, he says. Give me a job, you rockhead. I ought to... I might be out of business altogether before morning. Oh, hype. I don't buy all that hype. You can't brush me off that easy. What? Vinny. Hmm? One out of the car. Stay there. We may have to leave fast. I'll douse all the lights in here. Sam? You win. 
You and Gladys, come on with me. I'll show you some. Hey, see, Sam? Where my flashlight shows now? The alcohol's made upstairs. From here, through the cellar, the alcohol gets piped to my corn syrup factory. Our pipeline runs two miles in an abandoned sewer we found. Gosh, what a setup. Pipe I sure got to hand it to you, fella. Huh, Gladys? Yeah, it's remarkable. Sam, how would you like to stay here? To uh, work here? Sam. Sammy's up to something. Uh. Pipe. You take us out of this cellar this minute. Yeah. Yeah, Hype. Uh, let's talk about it outside. Well, yeah. talk right here. I don't believe there was any message. You rushed Vinny off her feet. Now you want to sneak out and squeal on me. You rotten connor spy stool. What, me? Thing. You're crazy. You got it out. Hey, you're heading on over. I'll go. Now, Sam will be quiet. You stay here with him, Gladys. It's dark. The way you're... We'll die down here, you murderer. Shut up. So long, both of you. For good. Hi. Hi. Benny, why aren't you outside like I told you? Well, this thing's cars all around. I get scared. It's so dark and creepy cars. here. Cars? Holy uh, smoke, we got to get out of here. Well, we can't leave Sam and Gladys. Never mind, Sam. Come on, it's a side door. But Sam and Gladys... Oh, sorry, I can't go out. What? Oh, that doorway over there from the cellar where you were just off flashlight. Sam! Gladys, over here! Gordon, Mrs. Gordon, stand what? where you are. Counter spies, Gordon. Then he was stuck, stuck, stuck. Yeah. Oh, good, Gordon, drop the gun. Look out, let go. Stop resisting, Gordon. The entire building's surrounded. I don't fuck, you'll get hurt. Uh, that's better. Handcuffs for Gordon, Peter. With pleasure. Gordon, you and all of your men are under arrest for making and selling illegal alcohol. Just now as we came in, we found Sam Vandervoort and his wife in the cellar. You'll be charged with their attempted murder. Hi! You didn't. Sam's a dirty stool pigeon. Oh. He was working for the counter spy. My own brother in law. You're wrong, Gordon. We only tricked him to trick you into leading us here to your still. Now your entire racket smashed. All right, Peters, have these people held outside. And we'll start taking this place apart. <laughs> When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Pepsi Cola, it's a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lot more value, lot more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen on Thursday for the exciting Counter Spy case of the Vicious Visitor. Tangling with the criminal I call the vicious visitor was dangerous for all concerned. For his prison guards, it meant a beating in the dark. For his partner, bullets. And for the woman who had once known him, it meant death for her husband, death for herself. I invite you to be tuned in on Thursday to Case of the Vicious Visitor on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by Leonard L. Bass, dramatized by Paul Milton and feature Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi ice cold tonight.